definitely want to win the die roll in a matchup like this. There's some disruption kind of one way and the other, but more than anything, having the tempo going your way, that's going to matter a lot. O'Brien's Invitational Top 8 three years ago was a pair of decks. It was Green Red Devotion and Green Red Tron. A nope. Chromatic Star fan. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't, not into interacting in his deck choices. He uh, seems to have a grasp on how good Ancient Stirrings is. And we'll start out Clay Spicklemeyer on Unstable Frontier. Unclaimed, Unclaimed territory. territory, not Unstable Frontier. It's unsomething. There we <laughs> go. And Terrarian Mox Opal Ooh. for O'Brien. And this is an online Mox Opal, but Chris was not able to cast anything off it. Tapping his cards left, tapping his cards right. I do like the multi-directional tapping. Keep it's because you got to do one with your left hand, one with your right hand. Sure. Whatever, man. <laughs> uh, Thalia from Clay. Now we'll get a Chromatic Star, two mana from O'Brien. Ironworks can combo through Thalia. Not really, though. It's definitely annoying. It pushes you back on casting your Ironworks in the first place. That much is true. Kite Sail Freebooter shows Mirror Retriever and three lands. Oh, man. Kite Sail Freebooter fails to find is one of my squares. Ooh. I'm getting wrecked this weekend. Actually, it's not the ones. It's Trawler Retriever two lands. I didn't think I was going to get that square. That means I'm gonna, I am win with an Alpine Moon now. Ooh, Jeff Hoagland does have those in his sideboard. It has to be on the battlefield. Correct. Let's swing for two. We're back over to O'Brien. He'll, he would love to find some of these main deck engineered explosives. There are three. Here's Stirrings. Ah, uh, there's two engineered explosives. Engineered explosives, of course, interacts very favorably against Thalia. Right. You can pay X as one, pay the Thalia tax with a second color of mana. That's just good. That's going to give you uh, engineered explosives with two counters on it. Well, it would if one of your lands wasn't buried, Ruin. Hey, you can use either the Terrarian or the Chromatic Star for this effect. Sure. And he'll go ahead and use the Terrarian. And you do kind of want to get the explosives on the battlefield now. You don't mm -hmm. expose it to a Freebooter or a Meddling Mage. Yeah, so engine explosives on two. He'll say go. Yeah, two Mantis Riders, two Phantasmal Images, and a Thalia's Lieutenant are the five cards for Clay. If he had a land, getting a Mantis Rider would be something. I mean, O'Brien still hasn't produced a Kork Clan Ironworks, but uh, this hand is not going to amount to anything yeah. on this turn. Well, it's really hard, right? You don't really want to play an Image or a Lieutenant because there's already an Explosives on two, but you don't want to play nothing. Right. Because then Chris, if you play nothing, Chris might not even un use the Explosives. He might just keep taking damage for a while. <laughs> that is true. Three is not that many. Yeah, I'm down to take three more, sure. And Clay makes... No plays. Back to O'Brien will go. He still has not found Court Clan Ironworks, the namesake card yet. Yeah, and the deck is powered down a little by the fact that you have to spend the time stirrings for explosives in a matchup like this. Right. That said, the draw that Clay has brought to the table is not applying enough pressure to make that really that big of a loss. O'Brien's going to have a good amount of time to find the namesake card. O'Brien clears away the board, plays a Chromatic Sphere, and passes. He still has that Scrap Trawler and Mirror Retriever, as you see Mantis Rider going to go ahead and hit him in for three. Yeah, that uh, land was a pretty big draw for Clay. This is about when he needed to start applying this pressure, and putting O'Brien to 12 means casting that second Mantis Rider gets lethal in two if O'Brien can't do anything about it. Inventor's Fair for O'Brien. I guess that's doing something. <laughs> it yeah. means it's not lethal in two. Uh, but it looks like Mantis Rider plus Phantasmal Image, depending what Clay does this turn, can well, fix that. Well, there's a Buried Ruin in play with that Engineered Explosives, however. you got Clay has to be mm. careful he doesn't overextend on this board. Yeah, too many threes is going to be a problem. You can diversify a little bit, play some two-mana creature to add to this. Not the Phantasmal Image, of course, as that would acquire the three-mana characteristic. But I don't mind this at all. Phantasmal Image this turn after cracking the Horizon Canopy. Yep. You're applying a lot of pressure, which is good. So he hits Chris down to six, but now we're going to go get Kark Clan Ironworks with that Inventor's Fair. Chris, we know, has Mirror Retriever Scrap Trawler in hand. I don't think he's going to miss on this. It would be very surprising. I may already. I don't know how possible it is for him to not combo this turn. He may just already have it. Yeah. I'll go ahead and take a look at it. It's not going to take very much. 
I'll stick with you for it. All right, here is Clark Clan Ironworks. First play. And he can demonstrate. There is a loop, I believe, just have has in his hand here because there's an opal in play. We'll see how much of this clay wants to see. So Scrap Trawler can get back Mirror Retriever, and Mirror Retriever can get back Scrap Trawler, right? And each time when you get it, you get a Mox Opal back. So you're netting that both those plays, sacrifice for four mana, and cost five. But each time you're netting a Mox Opal. So on each loop through, you get five, six mana off your Opals, four off the creature. You make ten mana and spend five. So you're making as much colorless mana as you want at that point. Hmm. Uh, at which point, then you can start your mate. Yeah, then you're just looping. And once you have all that mana, it's trivial to combine Scrap Trawler with some of your cantripping artifacts. Right. Go through your deck, find your win condition. So once you make infinite mana, then what you do is at some point, instead of getting back Mox Opals for more mana, you'll get back that one Chromatic Star each time. Yes, each time that loop, you do that loop, you lose mana, but who cares? You already made infinite mana. Ooh, speaking yeah. of infinite mana. You have a square for that one. I'll check that square. So I'm going to, because he demonstrated the loop, I'm going to get three or more historic cards played in one turn because the execution of the combo is three artifacts. Yeah, whatever. Did he control five artifacts? I don't remember. Whatever. I'll get that one later. Yes, he did. You're All good. Right. Oh, You're good. All right. All right. And we're going to sideboards here. All cool. right. Let's start on Clay Spicklemeyer. Most of the time, human sideboard is a bunch of creatures, for obvious reasons, so they play Aether Vial. But he's got Sin Collector, Deflate Daredevil, Reclamation Sage, Staticasters, Reflector Mage, and Militia Bugler's creatures. He also has two Damping Spheres and two Gut Shots as non-creature spells. And I expect to see the Damping Spheres here. Yeah, the best card on the sideboard here is going to be those two Damping Spheres. Now, as we saw, O'Brien has access to Engineered Explosive. Pretty high access to it. Three copies in the main deck, Ancient Syrinx to go find it. A number of redraws as well. And many of his creatures cost two, so... Dealing with Damn and Sphere is something that's not that hard for O'Brien to do, but even still, it does force him to do that sort of thing. Reclamation Sage is pretty medium in the matchup. It right. doesn't amount to much. What about this? I board in Dire Fleet Daredevil, I Daredevil your Ancient Stirrings, and I find my Damping Spheres. Ooh. No, no, we're off. <laughs> Am I, I, I being too, is this too fancy? I think we're going real <laughs> deep on this one. Look, the Damping Sphere is the most important card. I'm going to use your Stirrings to find them. I don't think so. No, not also, some, that's not bad. Probably not. Probably not. All right. On Christopher O'Brien's side, um, four Nature's Claim, three Guttle Response, three Lightning Bolt, two Gear Per Aether Grid, two Worm Coral Engine, and a Defense Grid. I actually like the removal here. Yeah, this, this is a matchup where a lot of what Clay is doing is presenting low toughness creatures that yeah. make it so you can't combo. Lightning Bolt cleans that up. Don't mind having access to more stuff that stops the disruption. Aether Grid is, should be pretty good for similar reasons then, right? I actually don't like Ether Grid here. Um, I've played it as the Affinity deck sometimes, and okay. the way that Thali's Lieutenant plays against you, it means you can't actually deal as much damage with the grid as you want to unless you've already drawn some piece of interruption. It's like once you get ahead, maybe it works, but when you're behind, it does nothing. Right. I think it's a little bit too much of a liability. Do you like Worm Coil Engine? Not so much. I mean, Clay's probably boarding down a Reflector Mage. It can have its spots. It's it's fine. I don't know how much you want to be boarding out your cantrips in this matchup, your, your redraws. Yeah. Last card, Nature's Claim. I don't know how stock it is for humans. Certainly have access to Damping Sphere. They don't all play Damping Spheres. Do you, do you reach for them or let them go? Nature's Claim is a card kind of more than others that really weighs your deck down. You can yeah. go light on it until you see the Damping Sphere. Maybe not. It does hit Aether Vial, which is not for nothing. Uh, it, it, for the most part, though, I think that you want to avoid watering your deck down and sideboarding. Mostly sticking with these Lightning Bolts, tagging uh, Meddling Mages and Kite Sail Freebooters. Overall, it seems like Clay still has a lot going on in this matchup. But even that game shows off how Ironworks is way more resilient here than Storm is. Uh, that engine at Explosives was great. Yeah. You just see a weakness in Clay not presenting much of a clock as well. Well, if you haven't had a chance to pick up your command, your course at 19, 2019, you can still order them over at StarCityGames.com. We have singles, foils, and boxes. Uh, all sorts of the, the product, you can still pick it up. StarCityGames.com slash M19. Get that Alpine Moon, put it in the battlefield, get, and then I'll get that bingo. I've really been enjoying the new Nickel Bolas. That card's nice. It's a great standard card. 
that's the new commander for my new brawl deck. Got a little God Pharaoh's gift package going there. Been having a lot of fun with it. Seven cards each here for game number two. And we'll see if Clay is able to present a faster clock in this game. That's a big part of what he needs to do here. You can't just set up Meddling Mage, call it good. You have to attack for a lot of damage very quickly. Yeah, that missed land drop where he curved in but then couldn't make Mantis Rider really set Clay back. And again from O'Brien, we see Mox Opal in the opener with Darksteel Citadel. Can, should make that turn three Ironworks if it's available. And again from Clay Athalia. And you like Bryant getting this Opal online before turn two. That means he doesn't have to spend a mana to commit that one. So, Ryan Clay, Christopher O'Brien's hand is two Lightning Bolts and a gear per Aether Grid right now. Now, I know Aether Grid is slow, and I agree with what you said about it. Because Chris has started on Citadel Citadel, do you think it might play here? Uh, especially because he has that answer to Thalia here. This could show up on time. It's not always going to do this. Right. But there are some games where it does do this. Especially because these lands are artifacts. That, that's a pretty big deal. He'll need to commit a little bit more to get in a position where it actually blocks against the Mantis Rider. But you sure. know, the game is yet to show if Clay is going to even produce one of those. We're still very much in a position where, depending what happens this turn, Clay can actually get some toughness on the battlefield, toss a Thalia's Lieutenant out, and just get ahead of the grid even from here. Reclamation Sage from Clay. We'll see Lightning Bolt shooting down the Thalia, but then the, the Mox Opal's gone. Right, now we'll see. O'Brien oh, led on two Darksteel Citadels. Does he have a red mana to even deploy the grid from here? Ooh. No, it's just Inventor's Fair. The Reclamation State's coming through huge here. Yeah, that uh, worked out really well. Now, if don't Ryan, uh, Clay put that his first cavern on Illusion, so he does have is able to make man to make Phantas yeah. Phantasmal Fan image. There we go. That's the one. Thank I you. also get to check a bingo square because Il Illusion is neither. Eldrazi, Elves, or Humans. All right. Kaiself Rebooter from Clay. Now he's got some options. Aether Grid, Engineered Explosives, Lightning Bolt, and Nature's Claim. It's all reactive cards. And it's no castable spells. <laughs> Technically, well, you can cast explosives yeah, on zero. Yeah, you can cast explosives. This is all relatively interchangeable. Um, the Grid is the worst card in the hand, I think. Maybe the uh, Nature's Claim could make an argument so, for also being really bad. If your opponent is going... Uh, I was actually going to say the Engineer Explosives is bad. He's so far away. I think that the Lightning Bolt is the easiest card to leverage here. The Explosives just pays off immediately if he hits it. We well, have to hit two lands for it, right? Yes, you, okay. or, or a Chromatic Star into it. Yeah, there's oh, there's right. some ways okay. to do that. Or yeah. Terrarian this turn into Explosives. Uh, but it's more the fact that once the Explosive shows up, it will deal with two things. Um, the Lightning Bolt is the most immediately impactful card, and he does reach for that. That makes a lot of sense. And gets to follow up with Metally Mage and whatever he wants. And with, with the hand he's seen, he could just go for explosives. And actually names Gear Per Ether Grid. Right, so he's named the Aether Grid. And which is not bad here. Chris drew Yeah, the grid's online with one red Yeah, source. with one, so. So that makes sense. Now, as you mentioned with that explosive, see Chris has been taking some hits here. Yeah, if he uh, gets another colored mana source here, that explosive's on right. two, that'll clean up that's the Freebooter, really clean up the Meddling Mage, free up the Lightning Bolt that's under the Freebooter to cover something else. Okay. Brian, oh, Brian down, was down to 18 on last turn's attack. Phantasmal Image on Meddling Mage, Clay. That one, I think, is going to name Engineered Explosives. Yeah. We'll confirm it, but... Theoretically, I guess you could name Ironworks. It seems yeah. like answering naming explosives is going to be the play here. And it is. So he has... He's doing that the, the chain of meddling mages to try to lock down the game. Now, I guess if Christopher draws a lightning bolt, he could undo all of it. Yeah, bolt that freebooter, get that bolt back, bolt something else, or you can just... You know, bolt the meddling mage on explosives and go for that. If you have another colored mana source. Chromatic star into chromatic star for O'Brien. Says go. Currently that nature's claim is looking to be a gain four life spell for O'Brien. Yeah, well, can gain four. Also, he's got this um, inventor's fair that's online just off Darksteel Citadels. So Clay still has to be concerned here. He, he likely has enough, but it's not... 
completely done. And now we'll see another Kitesail Freebooter. Chris may have to claim his own star before this happens. And Clay does go for engineered explosives, but uh, yeah, th that All is right. something I was interested in because currently with the star just has this ability, goes to the graveyard, you draw a card. So targeting with the claim is just gain four life, replace yourself. Swing puts Christopher down to six, goes up to seven from that Inventor's Fair, draws for turn. It's another Nature's Claim. He definitely had a Damping Sphere on the mind when doing the sideboard, but the disruption is not going to be weathered. We're going to a game three. For a second there, it felt like Chris might be able to get that one. Yeah, he had a good mix of disruption, and I don't know what's in the sideboard here for O'Brien. It, it's not clear that drawing a different spell would have mattered. It, it's to interchange with that gear per ether grid, but you kind of saw how there's just games where the card just doesn't matter at all. You know, certainly Meddling Mage came in and pushed it back. There, there could have been a window yeah. without that Meddling Mage. Well, we... And it, and it was really scary. I mean, so many things, right? Reclamation Sage hitting Mox Opal. You'd even mentioned in Cyborg that Reclamation Sage is pretty medium against Ironworks, which I agree. Mm -hmm. That game, it might have saved Clay. Yeah, yeah, it, it's good enough to bring in. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's, not exciting. Right, that's like, that was, you know, a very above average Reclamation Sage. <laughs> right. Um, especially because Christopher's hand was that Aether Grid, and then just all these Dark Steel Citadels. It's one of the scariest things the card can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah with that that composition with Artifact Lands. That they, they, there's a reason that Dark Steel Citadel is the only one they let you play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you could play all Artifact Lands, Aether Grid would be a pretty nice card. <sighs> well, you, it would certainly be a good cyborg card. It's still yeah. to the point where you know there's just so many things where zero mana Artifact as your land drop just gets kind of busted. Yeah, okay, that's not the most busted. Thing yeah, you can do yeah, <laughs> that's just one of many scary things. You know, thought cast gets pretty good in those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'd even be wary of Frogmite. Sure. Now we're just everything's free. Yeah, I can see it. Zero mana is a good price. Well, if you're just joining us, we're a bit delayed in the tournament right now. In round five, we had um some technical difficulties earlier, but if you want to catch earlier rounds and previous tournaments, check out our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Star City Games. We have full archives of our events here on the SCG Tour, and we also have archives of previous things we've seen over on our website, including Versus Series and Commander Versus, and you can check out all that over on our page. Yeah, a recent feature there, Flashback. We recently rolled out Flashback with Todd Anderson. It's a cool new feature. If you're not on the YouTube page, definitely check it out, like, and subscribe. Really cool content here. All kinds of different ways to access magic. It looks like some hesitation on uh, O'Brien to keep the hand here, but we are underway with sevens again. All right, star from O'Brien and Aether Vial from Spicklemeyer. The first turn one play from Spicklemeyer of the match. And O'Brien's going to cycle through the star for Inventor's Fair into Mindstone and another star. So we're setting up for possible just man acceleration, possible ironworks. And from Clay, Thalia is the play. He also has a Damping Sphere in hand. But it does look like O'Brien is at the ready with a Nature's Claim. And there, there was that choice there at Clay, Thalia versus Damping Sphere. The Thalia on this turn means O'Brien can't cast Car Clan Ironworks here. You sure. can only get to four mana, so pushing him back there makes sense. Because Thalia also gets to attack, you get to turn up the heat. Three mana Mind Stone, and then Chris will... Go ahead. Oh, we need to stop him here. Hold on. Right? Uh, three mana for the Mind oh, no. Stone. Oh, no. Went one through mana. the one mana. We're good. We paid for Thalia. Yeah. All right. There's Ancient Stirrings from O'Brien. You were saying, so he, the Thalia kept him off Ironworks this turn? Right. And just because the Thalia is able to attack, and ultimately Spicklemeyer does need to come across the finish line, makes sense to lead on the Thalia. Pyrite Spellbomb is the find from O'Brien. That's an answer for Thalia. Clay and Step will make a Noble Hierarch. Also in this turn, you might see a situation where Clay wants to cast some creature. I, I guess he won't have the lands because the Damping Sphere will cost three. Might be a little bit different in a situation. If, uh, if you have some one-mana creature mm -hmm. and a land, you can 
cast that and Damping Sphere this turn. Yeah, well, fortunately, Clay's going to be at the point in just a minute here where that Aether Vial will let him start cast, not casting all those creatures, but putting them into play so that Damping Sphere won't have much collateral damage there. Yeah. Hand is pretty well unlocked. And you also bought Pirate Spellbomb. The thing about that is it's going to tax O'Brien for three mana, two to bring it on the way down, one to activate it here. And I want to say I spotted Thalia's Lieutenant and Phantasmal Image. Oh, wow. This is going to expose him to Engineered Explosives, but it gets the Thalia outside of Pirate Spellbomb range. Well, and especially because if he makes Thalia's Lieutenant here and leaves up the image, not only will it get it out of range, but Chris will spend the spell bomb on it, and then he'll get to save it. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't even have to get in that extra point this turn. Right. You could kind of force... You can time walk Chris if you're willing to give up a point of damage. Mm -hmm. And given where life totals are right now, I think it does make sense to go for that line. Just chip in for four here off that Exalted. Might even see him put a Damping Sphere into play. We'll see whether or not Clay... Wants to do that or really wants the extra damage? There's good reasons for both. Looks like he'll actually just take the extra damage line. Here's Phantasmal Image. So, Thalia Lieutenant up to three. Thalia up to four, three. Noble Hierarch up to two, three. That's Pirate, pirate Spell Bomb not looking as great now. I swing in for four. And from Clay. For, for five, actually, five. off the Exalted. Absolutely. And Clay opts to leave up Horizon Canopy rather than making Damping Sphere that turn. Uh, he, he would not be able to cast the oh, Sphere right. through Thalia. Thalia. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, choosing to cast the two-mana creature is what took him off there. And I, I, do, I do like this line. He's in a situation where Engineer Explosives is quite dicey, though O'Brien needs to produce a second color of mana to actually make that happen, which I'm sure is part of Clay's reasoning here. The texture game changes a little bit if O'Brien, say, is already untapping with a Chromatic Star, if he already has two Grove of the Brimbelows or Grove plus Florist. That, that changes things. O'Brien does get an extra look with the Mind Stone if he could crack into Explosives, either to find the Forest or Grove. But that also means he has one fewer artifact when it comes down to combo turns, which can amount to something. Pirate spell bomb, two mana from Chris. And this currently is only good for that phantasmal image. Right. Looks like there's a second spell bomb in the hand. And then there's Terrarian cast casting everything through that Thalia. But right now, Clay, Clay likely has a two-turn clock, especially with those Mantis Riders about to come online. There's a lot of pressure on O'Brien. So right now, just untapping with the creatures available, you have it's like 10 damage if we're counting the Phantasmal Image. And he takes the Vial up to three. If there is a, He can use the Hierarch, or if he has a third land, if he's able to deploy Mantis Riders, he can assemble lethal on this turn. He has land, Mantis Rider, Vial, a uh, second Mantis Rider? Even, so you've, if he Vials Mantis Rider already, you have three plus four on the Lieutenant, that's seven, plus four on the Thalia, that's 11, 12, 13. So it would take something else. The, the Phantasm Limit is going to get hit by that Pyrite Spell Bomb. That's right. why you see O'Brien hanging on to that. But uh, another Mantis Rider should do it here. I, I don't believe he has access to that. Yeah, it looks like we have Mantis Rider, Damping Sphere, Meddling Mage. And then one other card in hand. It might be Militia Bugler. Here is Meddling Mage. Counter onto the image and to the Thalia's Lieutenant. You mentioned that image is not long for this game. Yeah. Vials in Mantis Rider. Two more counters. Lightning Bolt was the name off Meddling Mage. And here is a full attack. So, if that Pirate Spellbomb shoots down the image... We're taking five damage from the, from the Lieutenant, four from Thalia, that makes nine, two more from the Lieutenant, that makes 11, and three from the Mantis Rider puts Chris to one. Yep. And because of that Mantis Rider, 
now. The engineer, engineer, engineer explosives wouldn't be able to deal with everything. Right. Clay will still have lethal attacker. You know, Hierarch also covering that as well. So O'Brien has to deal with a lot of things or just outright win on this turn. Both of those are pretty big asks. Doing I, either of those things is tough. How interesting is it that Clay has had Damping Sphere in his opener this entire game? And just <laughs> never felt the need to cast it. It is amusing. It, it seemed like a lot of the plan was cast this Thalia. If the Thalia is good, great. It's really hard for Ironworks to combo off through a Thalia. Right. And if it's not good, hey, I got this follow up. Right. Ultimately, this is an attack. This is a deck. Despite the prison elements, humans wants to attack. So the angle, it is amusing if you, when you watch it play out. I have the cyborg card, and I cast all these main tech cards instead. But it, it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Chris makes Kark Clan Ironworks. Mox Opal. He's got to pay one for it, though. I don't see it, Ryan. Yeah, these, these Mind Stones are good for some mana, but they're not good for redraws. If you sacrifice them to the Ironworks, you make two. Leftover hand is Pyrite Spell Bomb. That's three mana to draw a card. Mirror Retriever, ugh. Two mana to get something back, then you have to cast it. So let's see, he's got one Colors floating. I mean, I guess if he cracks it, so he's going to go up to a mana, pick a, he'll pick a color, sacrifice Mox Opal. He's going to try to do something with this Iron Inventor's Fair here. If he can set up a loop. Trawler Inventor's Fair. He may actually have enough mana to do it. Mirror Retriever. Down to two mana floating. So he sacks two artifacts. You know, he... I think he can do this. Yeah, one more lets him Inventor's Fair. Yeah, hold on. He can on. go find a Trawler. Right. Yeah, I think he's got this. Yeah, and then he has two he can sack to activate the Trawler, and he's getting this Opal back. Now, hold on. Getting the Opal back might not be right. I think he needed the Trawler in play. He, might, he may not matter, because he... Yeah, let's confirm here. He's cleared out his mana. I'm not sure it's there. He can sacrifice Opal, Mindstone, have one floating, cast Trawler, sacrifice Mindstone, go up to three, get back Opal, but then you have to sacrifice the Trawler or the Ironworks to keep going? Right. The thing I didn't don't know, and maybe we had the mana counts off, is whether or not he had to sacrifice that Mirror Retriever. I think, he, by my count, he had enough mana to get Retriever and Scrap Trawler in play with no mana floating. Now, that might not have been possible, and if it is, this is the best he can do. And if that's true, what he's hoping here is that he can chain together, um, that he can draw into something. And now he's he's panicked a little bit. He's got, so it goes down to one. He's not really making any mana off these because of that Thalia, up to three to draw a card and get back Opal. You can combo through a Thalia. It's not impossible. It's just not easy. Yeah. And the Opal is plus two mana every time he commits it, yeah. but you have to have redraws. Right. He The mana's not the problem anymore. It's that he's running out of redraws. Now, he has still a Pyrite Spell Bomb. That can be used as a redraw. You see he's up to three mana here. So Pyrite Spell Bomb will beat him down to one mana. He can sacrifice the Opal for two colorless. Sacrifice the Spell Bomb for one. He'll draw a card, get back Opal. Now that card, was that a forest? It looked like a forest. That is going to be the end of the line. And he picks up the cards. Clay Spicklemeyer is your winner, two games to, to one. Yeah, off to a 5-0 start is Spicklemeyer with the Human Tribe. Last time we saw him playing, he was on Mardu. Wasn't really happy with where he was with the format, but uh, so far things are working out by switching to humans. Yeah, and he puts a lot of good pressure on there. There was a tense moment where I think Meyer O'Brien may have had a chance to win there. And if you'd hate on Clay's side to see him actually lose that one.